Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we will discuss non-hormonal contraception. I am Dr. Diajlan, a professor of gynecology of obstetrics Tanta University. Uh, in this subject, non-hormonal contraception uh, can involve creating a barrier between sperm and the egg, changing the chemistry in the reproductive tract or a combination of both methods. Uh, in this subject, we will discuss male condom, female condom, sponge, cervical cap, diaphrag, spermicide, vasectomy, tubal ligation and tubal occlusion, intrauterine contraception. Firstly, the male condom. Male condoms are inexpensive, really available without a prescription, and used only at the time of sexual activity. They are worn over the penis during sexual intercourse. They are also available with a wide selection of lubricants on the condom to help and enhance sensitivity and pleasure for both partners. How does it work? The condom is worn over the penis during sexual activity. It should be put on before any skin-to-skin -skin genital contact occurs. The condom acts as a physical barrier, preventing direct contact between the penis and the vagina. It prevents the exchange of body fluids and also traps the sperm in the condom so it can't fertilize the egg. The condom is thrown away after intercourse. A new one must be used for each repeated act of intercourse. How effective is male condom? Typical use failure rate is 180 of 1,000 women during first year of use. Perfect use failure rate, about 20 of 1,000 women during first year of use. This is a high percent. Advantages, widely available, hormone-free, inexpensive, safe, effective, decrease the risk of cervical cancer, protect against sexually transmitted disease, may help to avoid premature ejaculation for male non-latex non-latex options available for use with latex allergies or sensitives both partners participate in their use so shared so both shared responsibility also it may be used with other contraception methods to increase their contraceptive effectiveness disadvantages may slip or break during intercourse, may decrease sensitivity, may cause latex allergy, and may interfere with the maintenance of erection. Female condom. The female condom is a soft, loose-fitting, seamless nitripolymer cheese containing two flexible rings, one at each end. It's inserted into the vagina before sex and works by holding in the sperm preventing it from entering the vagina. How does it work? The female condom is a barrier contraception method preventing contact between the sperm and the vagina. The external ring at the open end of the condom sites outside the vagina, providing some protection. The internal ring at the closed end of the condom is inserted into the vagina and helps to keep it in place. The cheese is coated on the inside with a silicone-based lubricant. It can be placed in the vagina up to eight hours before sexual intercourse. A new female condom should be used for each repeated act of sexual intercourse. How effective female condom? Typical use failure rate is about 210 of 1,000 women during first year of use. At perfect use failure rate, about 50 of 1,000 women during first year of use. Contraceptive sponge. The contraceptive sponge is a small, disposable, fully refrain from a device that's placed in the vagina. It fits over the cervix to provide a physical barrier to prevent sperm from entering. The sponge also contains a spermicide which helps to absorb and traps sperm. How effectiveness? 
The sponge is less effective for women who have given pearls. Effectiveness can be increased by using the sponge in combination with the male condom. Typically used for your rate, 240 of 1,000 women during first year of use. Perfect use for your rate, 200 of 1,000 women during first year of use. Advantages. It offers a barrier method and spermicide in one Provides 12 hours protection and doesn't need to be replaced for repeated sex during this time. Enhance effectiveness of other forms of contraception such as condoms. No hormones available at pharmacies without prescription. Cervical cap. The cervical cap is a deep silicon cap that fits against the cervix and prevents sperm and bacteria from entering. Advantages. No hormones can be used by women who are breastfeeding and it's available in three different sizes. Disadvantages, higher failure rate compared to other types of contraception, increased risk of recurrent urine tract infection, increased risk of toxic shock syndrome. Some women may have trouble inserting it correctly. Gel must be, repeat, re, gel must be reapplied after each act of intercourse. A poor fit or silicone allergy will prevent some women from using the cap, does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. Diaphragm. This is a cap made of latex or silicone and nylon that covers the cervix and prevents sperm and from entering. The diaphragm should always be used with a gel, which is placed inside the diaphragm to immobilize or kill sperm. Advantages can be used by women who are breastfeeding. The diaphragm is one size and fits most women available at pharmacies without a prescription also. Spermicides, a chemical called nanoxone 9 comes in form of cream only for use with diaphragms, gel, foam, films, or suppositories. By inserting spermicide in front of the cervix in the vagina, it destroys sperm on contact. Spermicides should be used along with another method of contraception such as condom because alone they are not highly effective. Vaginal spermicides are among the least effective of all contraception options. Failure rates in the first year of use vary from 18% with perfect use to 28% with typical use. Spermicides should be used with another barrier method of contraception, such as diaphragm or sponge. Advantages, no hormones. When used with another barrier method, effectiveness increases. May also protect against bacterial infections and pelvic inflammatory disease. Disadvantages, not highly effective. Using spermicide can be messy, must be inserted before sex because it's only effective for one hour may irritate the entrance of the vagina or the tip of the penis, may increase the risk of HIV transmission, does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. Vasectomy, male sterilization by vasectomy is a parameter which is used for permanent surgical procedure to close or block the vas difference, the tubes that carry sperm to the penis. Since it's permanent, this option is special for those who have decided that their family is complete or that they don't want to have children. Compared to tubal ligation, vasectomy is safer, more effective, less expensive, and less invasive. Although vasectomy is highly effective, failures do occur and can occur many years after the procedure. For every 100 women who rely on vasectomy for contraception, two women will become pregnant. It's safe and highly effective, less invasive and fewer complications. The female does not suffer with this. It's a long lasting permanent and also 
allow male partner to assume some responsibility. It's a simple procedure, no follow-up required, does not interfere with sex, no significant long-term side effects. Also no hormones, discrete and cost-effective, and does not affect sexual function. Disadvantages, permanent and irreversible, risk of having regards later on, no effective, not effective immediately, and must use another contraception method for three months and do a follow-up sperm analysis that shows no sperms are present in the semen. Possible short-term surgery-related complications as pain, bleeding, vasovagal reaction, infection at the insertion site, and swelling of the scrotum. Rarely, the vas deferens could reconnect by themselves. Also, it does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. Tubal ligation and tubal occlusion. Female sterilization by tubal ligation is a permanent surgical procedure where the two following tubes, which transport the eggs from the ovaries to the uterus, get disconnected. Female sterilization by tubal occlusion is a permanent procedure where a microinsertion is placed into each of the fallopian tubes. The microinserter, the microinserters work with your body to form a natural barrier that keeps sperm from reaching the eggs, preventing pregnancy. Although female sterilization is highly effective, failures do occur and can occur many years after the procedure. Failure rates vary on which technique is used. Advantages, this procedure is safe, highly effective, long lasting, permanent and simple procedure, does not interfere with sex, does not affect sexual function, no hormones, may reduce the risk of ovarian cancer specific to tubal ligation, no incision or scar, can be safely performed in outpatient setting. However, it's permanent, irreversible, not effective immediately where microinserters are used, must use another contraception method for three months and do a follow-up confirmation test. Possible short-term surgery-related complications as pain, bleeding, infection at the site, at the site of incision. Risk of ectopic pregnancy if failure occurs. Rarely risk of not being able to put in the microinserters or of them slipping out, follow-up may be required, and rarely the fallopian tubes could reconnect by themselves. Intrauterine contraceptives. Intrauterine contraceptives are long-acting reversible contraceptive methods that are used by over 150 million women worldwide. They are the most effective forms of birth control available. Intrauterine contraceptives are small T-shaped devices that are inserted in the uterus by a healthcare professional in a clinic. There are main two types of intrauterine contraception, the cover intrauterine device and the levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system, which contains a progestin. Typical use failure rate about eight of 1,000 women during first year of use. Perfect use failure rate is about eight of 1,000 women during the first year of use. Intertrine contraceptions are one of the most effective methods of contraception available. It's highly effective, reversible, safe, and the cost effective, long-term, forgettable, and invisible. May be suitable for women who can't take estrogen, may be suitable for breastfeeding women, reduces risks of endometrial cancer. Initially, irregular bleeding or spotting may occur. More or less as expensive. Some pain or discomfort during insertion. Real risk with the insertion could include infection, perforation of the uterus, or expulsion of the IUDs. Also, it does not protect against sexual transmitted infections. Since IUDs don't protect against sexual transmitted infections, to make sure you are protected against pregnancy and sexual infections, 
use a condom for every sexual encounter. Firstly, the cover intertrine device. Advantages it may be used as emergency contraception within seven days of unprotected day sex. It doesn't contain hormones, non-hormonal contraception. However, it may increase menstrual flow and cramps. Also, it may increase pain during periods. There are two main types, the hormonal IUD and the cover IUD. The hormonal, it's known as Myrena. The cover is known as cover T. The medical names, hormonal IUD, Myrena. However, for cover, it's known as multi-load 375 and cover T380. Effectiveness, hormonal IUD, about 99.08% against 99.02% for cover IUD. Hormonal IUD lasts for five years unless you have it removed earlier. Also cover multi-load is effective for five years. However, cover T380 standard is effective for 10 years. This is sometimes called the cover T. Fertility retainers when it's removed for pause. Who can use it? For pose, any females at any age from menarche to menopause. For hormonal, it contains progestogen, but for cover, it doesn't contain hormones. For visibility, is very discreet for pose. For sexually transmitted infections, no protection for pose. What are the difference in side effects, especially bleeding patterns? For hormonal IDs, during the first three to five months after insertion, bleeding patterns are unpredictable. Irregular light bleeding is common. After one year, approximately, 65% of women will have only very light bleeding or no period at all. Myrena can be used to treat excessively heavy menstrual bleeding. However, for cover IDs, the frequency of periods will be the same as the experienced prior, prior to insertion, but blood loss may increase in amount and number of days bleeding. Some women may experience more painful periods. Also for side effects for hormonal contraception, it allows six months to adjust to hormones. Only a small amount of progesterone passes into the bloodstream and the hormonal side effects are extremely rare. If they occur, they are generally mild and improve with time. Research work have, research work has found no differences in the rate of symptoms such as headache, acne, mood changes, and weight gain between the users of cover IDs and hormonal IDs. On the other side, there is no hormonal side effects for cover IDs. What are the possible risks of using an IUD? Firstly, abdominal pain following insertion. Some women notice abdominal cramping pain for up to a few weeks. Perforation. This is a rare but serious complication where the ID passes through the wall of the uterus into the pelvic area. Usually at the time of or shortly after insertion, this may occur in about one per 500 insertion. This requires surgery and there is general anesthesia to remove the ID. 
the risk of perforation is further increased when the IUD is inserted in a woman who is breastfeeding, about six times increased risk, and is within 36 weeks postpartum, three times increased risk. Expulsion. Sometimes the IUD may partially, sometimes the IUD may be partially or completely pushed out of the uterus. It occurs in about five per 100 insertion and is most common in the first few months following insertion. It's important to regularly check for the threads to detect if this has occurred as the IUD will not work effectively if not fully within the uterus. PIT. Pelvic inflammatory disease is a rare complication of IUD insertion, most likely to occur in the first few weeks following the insertion procedure. It occurs in less than one per 300 insertions. PID may, in some cases, lead to infertility. Miscarriage. If a pregnancy occurs in the uterus, there is an increased risk of miscarriage if the ID is then left in place, there is increased risk of miscarriage with infection in later stages of pregnancy or premature birth. Ectopic pregnancy. If a pregnancy does not, if the pregnancy does occur with an ID in place, there is a small chance the pregnancy will develop in the fallopian tube. However, because the ID prevents most pregnancies, it's an uncommon complication and less common than amongst women who are not using any contraception. Ectopic pregnancy is a serious condition and can lead to reduced fertility. To reduce complications in the rare event of pregnancy occurring with an ID in place, it's important to see a doctor as soon as possible if you have any reason to suspect you are pregnant. If there's a change in your Usual bleeding pattern if a period is missed, if the period is lighter than usual, or you have unusual abdominal or pelvic pain. Thank you.